So we're going to talk about one final radical rule today, um, which is we've t we talked in the last video about multiplying by distributing. We've talked about adding by combining like terms. And this one is about dividing by a radical. Um, when you divide by a radical, um, it is more simplified if you do not have a radical in the denominator. So uh, it's, it's okay to have radicals in the numerator, but we don't want to have any radicals in the denominator. That helps us combine them later on. So what we're going to do is called rationalize the denominator. Rationalize the denominator. By rationalized, we mean make it a rational number, not an irrational one like square root of six. So here's how it works. Um, think about this. If I have the square root of three times the square root of three, what do I get? I have the square root of nine, which is just three. Or if I had the square root of four times the square root of four, that would be what comes four is 16, which is, square root of 16 is four. You noticing a pattern here? If I had square root of five times square root of five, do you want to take a guess what I would get? The answer is just five. Anytime you multiply a radical by itself, what you get is just that plain thing without the radical sign. So this is going to help us rationalize the denominator. Because if I don't want to have a radical down there, well, all I need to do is, let's pick a different color, multiply by that thing. So if I don't want to have the square root of 6, multiply by another square root of 6, and now I have just plain 6. So you'll notice I put one on the top as well. That's because I have to keep this balanced. I'm not trying to change the expression, I'm just trying to simplify it. And so um, what I do on the bottom, I have to do on the top as well. Um, here's the reason that's a legal move, because what's anything divided by itself? It's just a one. So when I take this and I multiply it by what's technically a one, I'm not changing the expression. So. On the bottom, I have just six. Four times the square root of six is just four root of six. Nothing I can do with that. And these don't combine, because that one doesn't have a radical on it, so don't try to combine these sixes. But these are both outside the radical, so I can combine those. Um, four divided by six. Think of that as just a fraction. What is four sixths simplified? If you like took a two out of both of them, it would be two-thirds, right? So change this to a two and change this to a three and now I've got two root of six over three. That's my final answer because the radicals are as broken down as they can be and I don't have anything left on the denominator that's a radical. I know that this looks more complicated than what we actually started with but it's more simplified because there's no radical in the denominator. Let's try another one. Um, let's do So think back when we talked about dividing polynomials. Anytime you've got a numerator that's kind of long like this, you can split it up all over that same denominator. So there's a couple ways I could handle this. I could go ahead and simplify some of this stuff, break it down a bit. Or I could split it up all over the square root of 3. Or I could go ahead and rationalize the denominator by doing square root of 3 on the bottom and square root of 3 on the top. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split it up. So square root of 9 over square root of 3 plus 
this over the square root of 3 minus this over the square root of 3. So just put it all over that same denominator, break it up a bit, and let's see what we get here. Um, if you wanted, you could go ahead and divide these if that works out, like 9 divided by 3 is 3. So that worked out. Um, 2 divided by 3 doesn't simplify. So on this one, I'm going to need to rationalize the denominator. Remember, if I don't want a radical in the denominator, I'll need to multiply by that same radical. And if I do it on the bottom, I need to do it on the top too to keep it balanced. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. And then I've got 6, and 2 times 3 is 6. And that was a plus. So that's great. Now I've not got any radicals in the denominator. And you'll notice 6 divides by 3. That's just 2. So 2 root of 6. Alright, let's work on this last one now. 80 doesn't divide by 3. So again, I'm going to rationalize the denominator. Square root of 3, square root of 3. So that square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just plain 3. And now I don't have any radicals on the denominator. On top, I've got negative 5. And then 80 times 3 would be 240. Um, 240 is going to break down, so we're going to want to take 240 and try dividing it by some perfect squares. So, let's see. Um, I'm trying 240 divided by 9, divided by 4, and it looks like it only divides by 4. So. 240, that splits into, let's just bring it over here, 240 splits into 4 and 60. Oh, 16. I bet 16 is better. Let's try that. 240 splits into 16 and 15. There we go. That's bigger. Square root of 16 is 4. So, I'm going to replace square root of 240 with 4 root of 15. Sorry, this arrow. So now I've got negative 5 times 4, which is negative 20, the square root of 15, all over 3. Again, I can combine these because they're outside the radical. I can't combine these because they're these. this is under the radical, that one's not. Um, so it looks like I'm done. I've got the square root of 3 plus this minus all of this. None of that breaks down or simplifies anymore. So that is my final answer on that one. Let's do one final example of combining a bunch of this stuff. Let's do the square root of 5 times square root of 2 minus 3 root of 10, all divided by square root of 2. Again, there's quite a few ways you can handle this. I know I'm going to need to distribute the 5. I know I'm going to need to rationalize the square root of 2. So you can start with however you want. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 5 first, just because that's what I feel like doing. So, if I distribute that 5, 5 times 2 is 10 minus 3, and 10 times 5 is 50. 
again, that's still all over the square root of 2. Um, now, if you want to go ahead and rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root of 2 and square root of 2, you can do that. Or we could go ahead and split it up. And I'm going to do that because it looks like these divide evenly, so I'm going to go with that method. So square root of 10 over the square root of 2 minus 3 root of 50 over the square root of 2. This works out pretty nicely. 10 divided by 2 is... I can't break that down, but I no longer have a radical in the denominator. This is now the numerator, so I didn't even have to rationalize that one. Same thing here. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So minus 3 times the square root of 25. And I didn't even have to rationalize the denominator. This one will simplify. The square root of 25 is just plain old 5. 5 times 3 is 15. So there we go. That's the final answer on that one.